Hi there. I'm Wendy Dubo. I'm a senior research scientist at the National Center for Women in Information Technology, NCWIT. And today I'm going to talk with you data, particularly how to collect and effectively use data to support your change efforts. You might ask yourself, why data? As you know, NCWIT supports evidence-based approaches to recruiting and retaining more women and other historically underrepresented groups in computing programs. And some of that evidence comes from, you guessed it, data. Collecting data allows you to determine the impact of your change efforts. Then you can determine the most effective use of your resources and potentially have readily available information that allows you to make a case for ongoing support for your initiatives. Data can also help you understand the context of your department from a more holistic perspective. So now let's talk about some different types of data. I want to tell you about the NCWIT tracking tool. NCWIT member organizations in the Academic Alliance can input data about student enrollments and demographics and other data and receive reports back, often with comparisons with other institutions. So if your department is an NCWIT member, then you have access to this. And if it's not, you can become a member. It's very easy, no cost. The tracking tool takes the data that you submit and allows you to examine trends among applications, admissions, acceptances, enrollments, and graduation rates in your majors. The data is broken down by gender and can also be broken out by race and ethnicity. You can compare your departmental trends to national trends. To get these data, you would work with your institutional research office on campus. NCWIT Academic Alliance members can also submit this information by using the appropriate forms on the NCWIT tracking tool webpage. Unfortunately, because of a lack of resources, as of this recording, we've not been able to accommodate the different needs of community colleges. We apologize for that and are trying to find funds to enhance the tool. I also want to tell you about the NCWIT Entry Survey sometimes known as the first course or introductory course survey. It can help you with data collection. This survey is administered to students and is designed to give you feedback on your recruiting efforts. So you administer this survey to students in your introductory course or courses, and it provides information back to you about the impact of recruiting events or what other factors influence their decision to take that introductory course and to potentially consider officially entering your program. Feedback from this survey will let you know what is and isn't working well in your recruiting efforts, and it will help you determine how to most effectively focus. By repeating this survey on an annual basis, you can track how effective any changes in your recruitment strategies have been. The survey is not currently available on the web, but if you email info at ncwit.org, we will send you the most current version. Another survey that NCWIT puts out that can be very useful is called the Student Experience of the Major, or the SEM survey. With this, you can identify strengths and areas for improving your department's efforts to retain students. It contains several specific modules that can be used together or independently. It's available as a survey in a box that contains the full survey with all the survey modules, so all these different constructs depending on what you want to evaluate. It has an instruction manual in the survey in a box, guidelines for getting human research approval when it's needed, information on how to administer paper and online versions of the survey, suggestions for action based on the survey results, and much more. It's a really valuable resource. You can also contact Extension Services staff to get information about modules that are ready to import into SurveyMonkey or Qualtrics, so you don't have to input all those questions yourselves. So we've just talked about how you can utilize NCWIT tools to collect data to inform your recruitment and retention strategies, but what about other forms of data that you might have or need? For example, does your institution or department already systematically collect some forms of data that can prove useful to your strategic planning? It might be general information that's collected about students or the department. 
faculty and course evaluations, exit surveys for students leaving the major or the institution. Some campuses and departments systematically collect this and it can be such useful information about to inform your retention strategies. Maybe there are climate surveys. Your department might conduct a climate survey or your institution might conduct an institution-wide climate survey. At the institution level, if information is collected about specific major or departments, you can see how your department's climate compares to others at your institution. Or focus groups. Student focus groups can be conducted to learn more about a specific issue or about the department more broadly. Many resources about conducting focus groups can be found online. One tip is to consider having someone who's not faculty conduct the focus groups, as students might be more comfortable openly expressing their opinions around someone who does not have control of their grades and won't in the future. There are lots of other types of data that might also be available. You should check with your institutional research office, admissions, student affairs, diversity and inclusion offices, and see if there's anything they collect that could be useful in your efforts. I also wanted to mention, again, if you didn't watch the other videos in this module, NCWIT's By the Numbers and the NCWIT Scorecard. So these are sources of national data where uh, all kinds of interesting information is pulled together so you don't have to go find them yourselves. By the Numbers provides really high level indicators about girls and women in computing K-12 through industry. The NCWIT scorecard contains the data sources for everything that's in By the Numbers, and it provides charts showing trends over time. There are probably, I'd be guessing, 40 plus charts and data sources in the NCWIT scorecard across, maybe even more. You can use these with citation in any reports or proposals or presentations you might want to make. Really useful for providing national context. So if there are any other data sources you believe would be useful to academics trying to make change in their departments or institutions, let us know. You can just write to info at ncwit.org. Meanwhile, go have some fun with numbers. I do it every day and I'm very happy.